Investment trusts or REITs breathes new life into languishing real estate stocks. And that's exactly what happened today in trade after the Reserve Bank of India paves the way for banks to invest in REITs and infrastructure investment trusts. CNBC TV 18's Manisha Natarajan finds out if the opening up of this new tap will breathe life into the struggling investment vehicles. Flushed with deposits, Indian banks have welcomed Reserve Bank of India's announcement allowing them to invest in REITs and INVITs, that's Infrastructure Investment Trusts. Investment in REIT up to 20% of our NOF, I think it's a welcome move. And no one could be happier than DLF, the country's largest real estate company by market value, which is looking to unlock its rental assets. Everyone in the country, most of all the banks, should be very happy. As far as DLF's plans go, there has been an exclusivity arrangement which has been worked out. I'm sure the processes are long time consuming and therefore one should leave it for the natural process to culminate. However, industry experts say opening the tap on funds alone won't do the trick. It's important for the momentum in office space leasing and rentals to stay buoyant for banks and mutual funds to look at investing in REITs. Data released by global property consultant CBRE shows a healthy uptick in office space leasing activity in the January-March quarter of 2017. This is across all major Indian cities. Leasing activity touched 8 million square feet, up 8% annually, with the national capital region, Bangalore and Mumbai leading the charge, followed closely by Hyderabad. The move today by the government uh, should be very encouraging uh, for, for people who want to set up REIT in India. Plus, with the office market being buoyant, uh, the absorption rates being one of the highest ever. Uh, uh, so all, I think all uh, things are aligned. By this year, India should uh, get the first uh, REIT. Listed companies with large rent-generating A-grade assets like DLF, Prestige, and even unlisted companies like K. Raheja Corp and Embassy Group are some of the biggest beneficiaries of today's RBI move. Together, they have REIT assets worth over $30 billion. Now, within the real estate industry, the bets are on K. Raheja or Embassy, which are both backed by the world's largest real estate PE fund, Blackstone, to be first of the block when it comes to REITs. It's unlikely, though, that either of them will be ready before November or December 2017, since there are several procedural issues that still have to be ironed out. So, Infrastructure Investment Trust, or INVITS, could be the more immediate beneficiary of RBI's move, given there has been some forward movement in that space. IRB Infrastructure Invit Fund, for instance, has already filed a draft red herring prospectus with SEBI for a 4,300 crore rupee IPO. In New Delhi, Manisha Natarajan for CNBC TV 18. Time for